What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I got hopefully a quick video for you guys today. I'm currently up in the Black Hills, wheeling with some of my buddies and the C4 crew, and I'm putting a lot of new modifications on the truck to the test. The first thing that you guys can already see are the wheels and tires, but I've also refreshed the rear suspension, and to reiterate on some of the previous videos, I of course have new axles up front, we reinforce some stuff, and I just want to kind of walk you guys through everything as we're turning the truck into more of a rock crawler, because look at these trails we're on right now, it's kind of crazy. You guys will see the whole wheeling and camping experience from this trip in the next video, but for now, here's a quick rundown of how the truck sits going into the winter of 2023 into early 2024. Starting up front, these are the things that I've already mentioned to you guys in the past, but I did have a little bit of a CV axle issue. I destroyed one of my axles on a recent trip, so the truck went into running for tacos and they hooked me up with some new CVJs up front. These are high angle CVs, which gives me a little bit more clearance. They should hopefully be a lot stronger than the regular OEM Tacoma CVs. While we were up front, I also reinforced the spindle gussets because when you're steering over really rocky terrain and you're kind of bouncing around, whether you're in four low, locked front and rear, or not at all, it puts a lot of stress on all of these components. So I opted for the version of these gussets which actually removes my sway bar. Previously I did have the sway bar installed because I do run a camper in the winter time which will be going on the truck pretty soon like as soon as I'm back to Colorado. But so far I do notice a lot more articulation out of the front when I'm going over obstacles like this which is a huge plus. I almost forgot to mention the new upper control arms too. I was previously running SPC upper control arms and they require a lot of maintenance and they're great for daily driving vehicles, but I kept blowing through the top ball joints. So now I'm running some total chaos uppers, which don't give me caster adjustment, which is a little bit of an issue when it comes to the new spacers and offset that I'm running. But I was able to get the most caster adjustment out of the lower control arms. And I'm gonna save most of my thoughts on these four down the road because this is like a race truck part. A lot of people say they are loud and there's a good chance that they will be at some point because they are race parts, but I'm not too worried about my truck making noise doing the things that I do with it. That brings us to the rear of the vehicle where a lot more has changed. I'm now running new DRT hangers in the rear for my leaf springs, which is going to allow me to get more flex out of the back. This reinforces where it actually connects to the truck, protecting me from rock damage. And with my previous suspension setup, like I mentioned in the previous video, I actually noticed that the tires stayed in contact with the ground more than when I did not have those. Now I gave you guys my input on that because I knew I was going to be changing the rear suspension as well. So also coming from DRT fabrication, we have now relocated where my shock towers actually mount up to the truck. And that of course allows me to run a much larger shock in the rear. With the DRT shock tower relocate kit in there, I'm able to run Fox smoothies. These are 2.5s which sort of match the front and this gives me 12 inches of down travel. As a Tacoma comes stock, I believe it's about eight and a half inches of down travel and then I of course went to the Fox 2.5 DSC which is a mid travel suspension and I think I had maybe nine and a half almost 10 inches of down travel and then we add the hangers which allow it to travel even further now with these shocks I'm getting almost a full 12 inches of down travel it's kind of like long travel suspension but I'm not actually cutting up into the bed we also had to install PRP limit straps and these happen to be 16 inches long which is perfect for this setup I'm getting full travel length out of all of the components in the rear and it's not going to overextend the shock with those in place we actually flexed out the truck while I was at running for tacos and I could get the front tire about two full feet off of the ground before I reach a tipping point. So all four tires in contact on a flat surface, we lifted the front left tire up two full feet, which is crazy. It allows you to drive over things like this. I will also say that these suspension components, while they are for crawling around in the mountains like this, it does make the ride on the road a lot nicer. Since I'm in the process of kind of turning this truck into more of a wheeling truck than a camping truck, it's still very much a truck just built for camping, but over the winter and getting into early spring, I'm probably going to switch things out in anticipation for the new Tacoma as well. I'm gonna put this truck through the paces just a little bit more and we're gonna kind of beef things up, gusset some places, and just make it a super strong, capable off-road vehicle. Now, last but not least, the wheel and tire setup. I've been eyeing up these wheels for a long time. Previously, I was coming from the Black Rhino Abrams. Now, I'm running a brand new wheel from Black Rhino known as the Shoguns, and these things, 
look absolutely awesome on the truck. So these are kind of like a matte silver finish. They are of course a 17 inch six spoke design and these are a negative 38 offset. A lot of people are going to ask and yes, I am also running spacers with this because I need to clear that massive shock in the rear with the reservoir mounted on the side of the frame. So my tires are poking out the side of the truck a little bit more than I would like, but with that wider stance, the truck feels a lot more planted both on-road and off-road. I have the new Black Rhino Shoguns wrapped in some Toyo mud terrains just like before. This is a true 35 inch tire. 35 by 12 and a half by 17. I put 30,000 miles on my previous tires and they still had plenty of life left in them, but I will say that new tires riding with an aggressive tread pattern like this on the road is a lot nicer. Over time, of course, they're gonna wear down. They're gonna get a little bit noisy, but for how aggressive this tire looks, they're surprisingly still pretty quiet. Now, last but not least, if you guys watch my van videos, you will know that I'm pretty familiar with this product now, but my wheels have Apex valves installed. I did a little bit of testing with the truck before we came up here to South Dakota, so let's check out how these things actually work. All right, Apex valves on the new Black Rhino Shoguns. I'm gonna check the current pressure. 39.4, because the tires are hot after riding over the pass, so I'm gonna do probably like a five second count to start. Just gonna time it with my watch. Already down to 27.2. Down to 19.2, might as well do another five. 13.6. That's what I'm gonna run them at. I'm just gonna count the same for all four tires. Easy. So that's it, cut and dry. You simply pull off the cap, you release the air for as long as you see fit. I'm typically running my tires at around an indicated 35 PSI, according to the Tacoma, which of course is going to be off a little bit. And if I pull those valves fully for about 10 seconds, I'll just time it on my watch, it goes down to about 15. Right now the truck is sitting at about 13 PSI all around because it is pretty cold up here. And I would not want to go much lower than that because there was a situation which you guys may see in the next video where I almost debeated one of these wheels today. So I'm beating this stuff up, testing out the new suspension, the limit straps, the DRT products, the apex valves, and of course the wheels and tires, everything that you see here. And so far, I am a huge fan of this setup. Now, since I am up here with the C4 crew, I am of course going to be testing some new C4 armor, which you guys will see in the next video. And I don't wanna give much of a spoiler right now, but the stuff is amazing and I'm excited to show you guys. Now, if you guys are interested in seeing a full build sheet of this truck right now, I do have it listed over on my website. If you go to cyproductions.com forward slash Cy Garage, you can find all of my vehicles, all of my build partners, all of the products that I bought, some discount codes and other things like that over there on my website. So go check that out. And while you're there, since it's getting cold, it's snowing and it's winter time, you can also check out the store I got beanies, I got hoodies, which are really affordable right now. I got jackets and quilted flannels, regular flannels, all sorts of winter gear. If you purchase something from my store, I will personally be shipping your order as soon as I get back to Colorado. So bear with me on shipping times, but every order that you guys place, that money goes right back into making more videos and content for you guys. So if you'd like to show your support, that's one of the best ways to do it. That's all that I have for right now. It looks like my friends are coming up the trail right now. So that was quick, probably one of the quicker videos that I've done in a while. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if you are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.